Hi guys, what's going on? Zura over here. In this video, I want to share with you a unique idea in the main line of London system that I came across uh, while doing little research in my opening lab. Uh, this nightmare error actually caught my attention first uh, when it was implemented by none other than Fabiano Caruana at the recently concluded World Cup 2023, uh, where he successfully used it with the black color against the London system. This game, in the general sense of the tournament, went seemingly unnoticed, but not for the real opening aficionados, I believe. Um, and also, uh, for me personally, white player was uh, my countryman, Grandmaster Mikhail Chetlishvili. So I was paying close attention. Uh, now let's jump uh, right into the game. So Fabi is playing with black. We start with d4, knight f6, um, bishop goes f4, d5, and uh, game has transposed into uh, the London system, knight f3, e6, e3, uh, the standard way of continuing here, c5, knight bd2, knight goes to c6 and c3. Nothing unknown so far, this is uh, recently probably one of the most popular positions in the chess chess theory, literally, uh, the main line of London system. And uh, there are many moves here with black, probably bishop d6 being the uh, main one, but um, Fabi chooses to go for c takes d4, which is also a pretty common idea here. And after e takes d4, knight goes to h5, trying to dislodge the knight from this uh, diagonal, h2, b8 diagonal, which is uh, crucial in the London system, right? That's why white develops the uh, bishop right there. So bishop retreats back to e3 and now bishop to d6. Uh, now black gets um, their bishop now on this diagonal uh, with the hopes of knight f4 if uh, bishop d3 is played, uh, the normal development basically in these positions. I think uh, this was also um, used multiple times in other games at the World Cup as well. Uh, most notably, um, I remember Rasmus Spane uh, against uh, Wang Hao. It was a marathon match. Uh, where Wang Hao ended up uh, winning, I think, uh, eventually uh, after a thriller uh, match. Uh, but um, in this game, um, White did not play bishop d3 and went for more principled knight e5. If White is contending for an advantage, knight e5 is probably the most critical try here. Um, where the main line here goes as follows, g6 actually, protecting this uh, knight on a5, then white goes g4 here, knight goes back to g7, now h4, um, and after h4, uh, position gets very sharp, there are two main moves pretty much, one would be h5, another one would be accepting the pawn sacrifice on e5, but um, after d bishop takes e5 here, uh, let's say h5, um, game gets very sharp. Uh, and uh, technically, if white has analyzed this position deeply with the computer, uh, that's probably what they are looking for. So Fabi very masterfully in this game uh, avoids uh, this uh, crazy complications, basically, um, which you definitely don't want to uh, uh, to go for um, early in the um, World Cup uh, knockout dynamics uh, uh, where there might be a chance that your opponent has analyzed uh, um, the line uh, pretty deep. So after knight e5, Fabi plays a simple move, retreating knight back to f6 um, and uh, now e5 knight is hanging. So if knight goes to f3, then queen c7 and uh, I think this uh, knight from e5 will still be uh, forced to uh, maybe not move away. There are ways probably to keep that knight, uh, but uh, 
black will be asking the questions basically uh, how does white protect the knight on e5 um, I believe uh, bishop b5 uh, seems uh, uh, playable but I think there is a move like a6 and not sure whether you want to give up uh, this light squared bishop because uh, black may also easily play c5 after um, they have castle or also a5 bishop a6 could be an idea as well anyways um, f4 again is the uh, most critical um, approach here or should I say it has been uh, so far um, I believe this game is actually um, an important threshold uh, in the theory where people might be um, thinking whether white has anything really here um, so uh, black plays queen b6 first okay let's follow along with this move normally um, we would think uh, okay that cannot be good right because uh, the standard reply to queen b6 is usually queen to b3 here right? um, at, uh, attacking the queen back uh, protecting the pawn on b2 and uh, an important detail here actually also is uh, that queen b3 uh, parries the threat that black had here taking on e5 and then taking with the bishop so for example um, I think there was uh, another interesting game uh, at the World Cup uh, uh, Ivan Ivanishevich uh, multiple times Serbian champion and a very strong great master um, versus uh, Lee Kwang Liam uh, two very strong remasters, Lee Kwang, uh, um, former World Rapid Champion and still 27, 30 players uh, currently, I believe, um, head coach of Webster University. There was a queen to c1, um, I think uh, knight takes e5, uh, pawn takes e5, bishop takes e5, using the pin along this uh, diagonal. Um, however, the line does not end here. Ivan Ivanishevich goes for knight c4 in that game, um, which kind of forces this move bishop to g3 check, because if taking on c4 then takes on e5, and um, white has discovered the attack winning a knight, right? So this bishop needs to be moved away from uh, the e5, takes back, now d takes c4. I believe white took on c4 here, and then a uh, game continued, queen c6 attacking the bishop and the pawn bishop will have to retreat back to f1 and after uh, b6 here, um, game continued uh, on unclear waters. Um, however, black was never in danger there actually, black uh, had the uh, control of the situation uh, for most of the time uh, in that game and eventually ended up uh, winning. All right, um, so uh, that is an idea if white doesn't go queen b3, all right? Uh, in this game that we are going to see, um, Mikhail went for uh, queen b3. And uh, this is the main position actually uh, where um, I want to uh, show this idea which is not a novelty by any means it has actually been played long time ago I think uh, 20 around 2017 for the first time in the correspondence game uh, but uh, let's before we jump into a move let's ask ourselves um, a question here um, <laughs> what uh, piece is not contributing into uh, blacks well-being let's put it that way okay or simply uh, saying which black piece is uncomfortable in the position I think uh, the answer to that would be well bishop on c8 and knight on f6 uh, knight on f6 is actually not doing much and not only not doing much but it is blocking the f pawn to kick this knight away from e5 which is a very strong piece right so you may already have an idea what we're gonna do here uh, black plays knight to g8 okay this is a very strong idea apparently uh, white let's say white continues bishop d3 and Fabi puts the knight on h6 
which apparently is even stronger than moving the knight to e7. Um, I guess in both cases, um, f control of the f5 square is the key denominator here. However, knight on h6 has few more options, um, which would be after um, f6, uh, well, at some point, okay, we'll probably never need knight back to f7, but uh, that square would also be available. Uh, it has control of the g4 square, so if you ever play like g4, there might be takes, it takes on uh, g4 ideas, and all around, I think, uh, a more flexible placement, but it's very similar to knight g e7, which has been the main move so far. So after this little idea, um, I'm not sure if uh, white has anything here. And computer uh, agrees. Um, computer also says that this is around zeros. Um, but uh, um, I like black's chances after f6 and kicking this knight away. Uh, let's see how game continued. Uh, Mikhail uh, went for uh, a, a new move here. Queen takes b6. Uh, forcing the queen trade. I think uh, before that short castle has been played here and um, black goes f6, knight takes c6, b takes c6 and um, on uh, rook uh, to e1 I believe there is a move uh, bishop a6 here uh, even after queen trade a b um, bishop will still be protected so um, <laughs> this is uh, one of the uh, ways this could go I think after uh, c5, there, there, c4, there could be queen b3, or there could be immediately the knight f5. Would, would that be too much? I think yes. Uh, first, queens have to be traded off the board, and then either go knight g4 and king d7. We can put also king on f7 immediately. Um, I think uh, black uh, here is, I would say, at least not worse. Um, but moreover, um, the game keeps going, so it's still um, a very double-edged play, which uh, usually um, is against what uh, London players want out of these positions. London players want this uh, very solid uh, one-sided game, all right? Uh, so um, we're not giving it to them uh, that easy. So queen b6 was played in the game, and after a b, uh, g3, um, f6, this knight was kicked away. Knight retreats uh, back to f3. Uh, uh, now black finishes the development here, bishop d3. Basically, we have queenless middle game, um, where um, black has more mobility than white, because white's pawn structure here is pretty fixed, uh, right? Um, it will not be easy to uh, move these pawns, while black has a lot of flexibility here. Uh, king will, uh, oh, it's not so clear where king is gonna go, uh, probably castle here, but knight f5, e5 ideas are um, in, uh, um, in the picture here. Um, well, I don't think so, actually, e5 will probably be a little too weakening, uh, but uh, definitely the queenside play here. Uh, knight going to a5 and then b pawn push. Um, if you allow b4, black would obviously be very happy about that. Um, if white plays a3, that would weaken uh, uh, light squares. Um, specifically c4 square, uh, square. And I think that's what has transpired in the game here. a3, short castle, um, long castle, white goes long castle, which kind of makes sense here. Uh, that doesn't change much actually where the kings uh, are located here, uh, because that's not going to be the main factor um, in the game, like the, uh, the uh, king safety here. I think the um, uh, minor piece dynamics will play uh, more important role. Uh, so b5, now securing the c4 square uh, for the knight. Now bishop to e8. Uh, remember, a um, few moves ago when I asked the question here, what is the white's, uh, excuse me, what is the black's problem at the moment? Uh, black's problem was the knight on f6 and uh, the bishop on c8, right? Now fast forward, few moves later here after uh, bishop goes to e8. Now this knight is about to get back into the game and this bishop is about to come with 
uh, a devastating force. Well, maybe not devastating, but pretty, uh, um, a pretty powerful bishop, right? It's going to become a very powerful piece. Uh, knight b3, b6, not allowing any counterplay here. Uh, bishop g1, bishop e f7. So far, the e6 pawn was hanging. I think bishop h5 was there also possible. But uh, let's just see vintage Fabi. Uh, Fabi's um, technique here is, I think, near flawless. <laughs> Rook e8, um, white is shuffling there uh, on their own side. Knight goes to f5. Now knight gets back into the game. If you play g4, I, I believe that's going to weaken the f4 square, like knight h4. So white does not, uh, well, cannot simply go for uh, opening up the king side here. Uh, bishop retreats back uh, to f8. And now uh, black gets additional ideas here. Well, first of all, bishop h5 puts the uh, rook on d1 immediately in an uncomfortable situation. Another idea would be knight to d6, then pawn to f5, and knight goes to e4, all right? Planting that knight on e4 very securely, or knight goes to um, d6, then bishop g6, offering the trade of light squared bishops, or even bishop there, trade the light squared bishops after you play bishop e2, and then knight d6, um, getting this uh, secure outpost on e4, and two knights on um, c4 and e4 will be dominating. Uh, so, um, white uh, player here, Mikhail, uh, uh, decides to give up uh, the bishop part ways with the light square bishop, which will uh, weaken the e4 square a lot uh, and uh, light squares in general. Uh, knight uh, goes to b3. Um, I believe now bishop h5 was forced, so that uh, rook needs, um, needs a square, um, and uh, Fabi goes with g5 no break um, basically now black is expanding on the king side f4 pawn uh, is gonna become the target minor pieces here black's minor pieces will be dominating uh 93 bishop h5 uh rook will have to move away bishop f3 uh complete control of the light squares there is clearly no knight f5 because bishop e4 would be the fork so indirectly protecting the f5 pawn uh, while activating the bishop knight takes c4 b takes c4 um, now uh, let's compare uh, this piece to a knight um, now in a lot of situations these knights are very tricky in london system uh, but uh, i was very impressed how effortlessly uh, Fabi handled this bishop e2 now um, activate or, or activating and grabbing even more space um, uh, for black here knight uh, f1 uh, trying to bring it to e3 I believe but uh, this is where um, the king side expansion and additional weaknesses here uh, comes uh, in handy g takes f4 g takes f4 bishop takes d6 well um, classic uh, um, element of or principle of two weaknesses right uh, one uh, white weakness was uh, uh, well the e file and the light squares I would say um, but uh, now something more tangible would be f4 pawn uh, which uh, black basically initiated with uh, with the g5 there uh, kind of like one may think uh, it, uh, it may be um, not so intuitive because it weakens the or pawns here, f pawns, um, uh, a lot, right? Uh, but uh, I think what matters uh, more is activity of uh, these bishops. Bishops need uh, open diagonals or some targets. Uh, bishop g3, king f7, knight retreats back to d2. Now b5, um, again, maximizing uh, the potential of the position, king a2 h5 now threatening i believe h4 and f4 pawn is about to fall look at that oh knight b1 uh, white basically does not know uh, what to do here and uh, one minute left on the clock they make it desperate basically nothing will knight b1 uh, but after h4 uh, bishop h4 bishop takes um, f4 rook gets in trouble once you play rook c2 bishop d3 um, and uh, 
uh, White is in a very desperate situation here. Uh, so Michal decided to resign. Uh, computer says uh, over plus three, um, plus uh, when you see uh, your opponent has over half an hour and, and you are under minute uh, in this uh, type of situation, uh, I'll totally understand uh, why Mikhail decided to uh, call it a day. Um, I think if you play Rook, uh, well, uh, first you'll have to trade here, obviously, uh, and if you play something like uh, Rook F2, I believe, uh, Bishop E3, and then this pawn gets going, and uh, although material is still equal here, um, I think uh, uh, White's existence is very, very dreadful here. Rook H8, Rook here, this pawn. Um, I think uh, you'll have difficulty moving this knight on any uh, reasonable square. Uh, so after Bishop D3, basically, uh, White called it. All right. This was uh, the game um, that I wanted to show you and just quickly to recap here. Um, I think uh, a calm move here. Um, so after knight h5, bishop e3, bishop d6, knight e5, calm move, just knight retreating back uh, might uh, uh, be the new trend here or at least the way Fabi handled this. Um, it was very impressive and after uh, this queen b6, Queen b3, uh, the knight g8 idea, um, I think black solves um, all opening issues. Well, um, <laughs> let me know what you uh, thought about the video. Hope you found it useful. Um, if you are a London player or you're looking for uh, a counter against the London with the black color, um, I think this may uh, come in handy. All right, uh, if you do uh, found this uh, video helpful, it would mean a lot uh, if you help the channel, um, like, subscribe, and all the good stuff, all the good stuff, while I'll see you next time. Cheers.